Welcome back everyone. I'm Jason and you're watching Jason Jensen Trains. Today's episode is actually part four of a series. Uh, my good friend Doug and myself are building a structure together. Now he lives in Connecticut and I'm in Colorado. So we are having to send it back and forth to each other. Now in the uh, first two episodes, we built this structure right here. And in the third episode, Doug showed how to build this awesome concrete structure. And he shows a really neat technique for uh, making wood look like concrete. And then he also built a wood structure that sits on top of it. Now, when he sent the model back to me, he also included this piece of styrofoam. So what I absolutely love about this project is that um, it forces me to think outside the box and to really be creative. How can I combine all these items to make this look really interesting? And what can I add to it? All right, well, we have a lot to do today, so let's get to it. So the first thing I wanna build for this project is this boiler house right there. Uh, let's see if there's a better picture of it. Oh yeah, right here. So I'm gonna donate my boiler house from the Atlas Gorge kit that I have. So I'm gonna simply follow the instructions uh, on assembling that. So you can see it's two parts. There is the uh, rusted corrugated metal structure that sits on top of the concrete structure on the bottom. So that structure, concrete structure on the bottom is right here. So I've already got it glued together. I've sanded my corners very smooth so that you won't see uh, the seams. So for this structure, I want it to look like stucco. So I'm using uh, a spray from Krylon. Okay, so the stucco is finished. Hopefully you can see that. It's really nice. It's a super fine finish. Uh, I think it looks like it's to scale. Now I'm going to paint this using chalk paint. Now I'm putting it on really thin because I want that texture of the stucco to show. I don't want to cover up all the detail. That's why I added water to this. This is what it looks like uh, with the paint on it. I've assembled the top structure and then spray painted the whole thing black. So the stucco structure gets a window and a door that slides. I first sprayed them with a bluish teal color and it's really nice because the door is two separate pieces. And then that gets put on top there. Now to rust it, I used the uh, rust set from ammo and then lightly sponged on some uh, of this metallic metal color and it. it's a uh, polished metal. So I'm just using some pigments and I'm adding some dirt, some weathering to it. And I've already used some uh, light rust wash and put some streaks on it. The uh, pigment is called Farm Dark Earth. Okay, for the final step, I'm using light rust pigment. And I just brushed it on. So I've added the rusted corrugated panels um, to the structure. And I didn't show how to do this because I've shown this in many videos before and I actually have a video on my channel dedicated to rusting corrugated metal. 
Now I just applied the colors uh, with a sponge using rust colors from Ammo and they sell a complete set of rust colors. I then used light rust pigments and just simply brushed those on. Well, all my windows are put in. I even dirtied them up. I have to be honest, I've never done anything like that before and all I did was took a tan color and just put a very little bit on there on my palette and then just added a lot of water to it and then brushed that on the window and let it dry. Then after it was dry, I took a clean wet brush and cleaned the center of it out. So what I've done is made a divider and so I just took the measurement diagonal and took the height then cut another piece and then cut a slit in the center then I just flip it around Okay, now I gotta make sure it's facing the right way. I just used a shader called Earth. And it's a reddish brown. And I simply put some streaks going down from the rust running down onto the stucco. Now we'll get our roof cards put on. So the first thing we're going to do is paint the underside and the edge the uh, turquoise color. I'm using desert turquoise. I'm going really quick so that some of the brown of the cardboard shows through to give it kind of a weathered aged look. Now we'll take a gray sky and do a little bit of dry brushing over. Now I'm using a pigment called Farm Dark Earth. And a little goes a long way. It really doesn't take much. So here's what I've decided to do. Um, I'm going to put a track here and I'm going to treat this as a siding that maybe doesn't get used a lot. So it'll be a little overgrown with some weeds. Um, I'll probably carve this away a little bit and put a stone wall and then carve it down maybe halfway take out that corner, put my stone retaining wall in, and then maybe a little corrugated uh, metal pipe coming out and do sort of a drainage scene right here. And then we'll have a, uh, a cement driveway here. We'll have to do a sidewalk. But what I've decided is that this is basically the back of the structure. So... In my eyes, this is the front. So I picture a large sign right here on the front of the building. Uh, maybe there's a sidewalk, you see a sliver of the road. Um, it would have to be carved down a little bit so it's a little bit lower than the sidewalk. Um, but I imagine this being the front of uh, the structure and this being the back 
Um, I'm going to focus just on this area and I'm going to leave the other side um, up to Doug so he can do whatever he wants on that side. Uh, he may do some more building. Who knows? Now, the first thing I've done is I've outlined where the buildings are going to go. Now, the next step is to put in where all of my cement is going to be. Um, the sidewalks, the driveway, and start to do some sculpting and then we'll carve out this, this corner here in front. So I've traced where my track is gonna go. So now I can set that to the side. So first we're gonna cut this direction. So I just put in a plaster stone wall and it's just from a, a section that I had and I just simply cut the top off. So I took a piece of wood and stapled sandpaper to it. Now I'm going to run over this right where the track goes to lower it just a little bit. So I've carved where all the dirt and grass is going to go. Uh, I've put in all of my lines. I put in cracks. Um, I did a stone. This is going to be cement. Uh, so I did cement uh, trim on there. Now I'm going to paint the concrete. And I'm starting with chalk paint, cocoon. We'll start with this and then um, end up putting a, a gray wash maybe over it. So I just cut some styrofoam to go on both sides of the track and it is completely level with the top of the rails. But I'll show you how I did this. So I cut the ties off of the side, but I was careful to leave the little nails that hold it in place. And then I cut a bevel on the underside or cut a little section out of it so that it fits up right up against it. So I just took the piece of track and I cut the ends off of all the ties at slightly different angles. I then roughed up the ties even in the center with the uh, saw blade. Now I'll paint this to look like real wood and then we can get that glued in place. My track is finished and I have an entire video on how to paint and weather track, but I'll show you up close what this looks like. Okay, now I'm going to put a wash over the uh, concrete that we did.
Okay, now we want to get it exactly how we want it because we're going to spray it with alcohol and then use 50% uh, Elmer's glue and 50% water and glue it all down. Okay, while we're waiting for this to dry, let's get our concrete glued in place. Okay, while we're waiting for that to dry, let's work on this corner down here. Now there's gonna be a drain pipe and I want it to look pretty muddy down here. So we're going to use some ammo product. Um, and this is earth ground. And it's kind of dark. Okay, now we'll go to dry earth. I have a lot of this because I'm going to be using this on the, uh, the new section of my layout, the uh, waterfront scene. It has a real gritty texture to it. Now, this is light earth. So the plants on here are super tree material and I just simply spray some hairspray on it and then sprinkle on some green fine turf, it's burnt grass. Okay, so all of the uh, base work is done. Now I have to cut a piece of styrofoam to go in the center and match it to look like this. Okay, so I just cut a thin piece to fit in between the rails. Um, you can get super fine cuts on this and it's perfect even for sidewalks. And if your sidewalk is on a slight incline, you can bend it easily and just glue it down with liquid nails. Okay, so I have a slight problem. Before I can get this glued onto the base, um, I need to do something with the back. I didn't realize that Doug wanted to do a 360 uh, a diorama where you can see all four sides. So um, there's a large structure that goes behind this. So I just need a little bit on this side and then uh, a little bit more on this side. So what I'm gonna attempt to do is put this side on my scanner and scan this into my computer and 
print it out and glue that to the back side. So I laid the structure on my scanner and scanned it in and then printed out some walls. And I even ghosted an old Coke sign on there. The powers of Photoshop. <laughs> All right, so now I'll uh, cut these out and glue them to the back of that. And uh, maybe Doug will build something that covers it and I'm fine with that. Okay, so it's glued in place. It doesn't have the, uh, the trim that matches, um, but overall I think it looks pretty good. Now we can get this glued onto the base. Okay, well, as you can see, I've added lots of detail castings. I've added telephone poles. Now, I did not go into detail and show how I did that because I have other videos on my channel showing exactly how I paint those. Wow, I had so much fun making this video. It felt so great to get back to doing some scenery work. Uh, I just thoroughly enjoyed it. All right, well now we're gonna send this model back to Doug and he's actually going to finish the diorama. And then after it's completed, it's going to be auctioned off on eBay and all of the money is going to go towards the Humane Society. So, uh, again, I'll be excited to see uh, what Doug does with this. All right, well, I want to give a huge thank you to Doug for uh, suggesting that we do this together. Um, it's such a fun project. So uh, I was honored that he asked me, and it just turned out to be so much fun. All right, well, be sure to visit Fosscale Models on YouTube and check out the past videos showing how we got to this stage here. Um, Doug just provides some great tips and techniques um, showing uh, the sections that he worked on. All right, well, until next time, stay motivated and happy modeling, everyone.